I mean, these two cabronas um, a while ago, and at the time I was, well, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly young, I would say. <laughs> I'm 22. I can't put it out. I met him when I was about, when was that, 18, right? I was 18. You were 15. I was 15. <laughs> um, I met him on MySpace. I remember MySpace used to be Kraken. <laughs> I was on, I, somehow I met Juanito because we were both Chabela Vargas' top friends. I don't know how that happened. Because <laughs> she knew why we were so fierce. She's like, they're going to be our, my top friends. And it's like, I'm not hit me up. Then we met at Knox. You know what Knox Woo! just happened? All oh, the Chicanas and whatever. Um, so we met there. <laughs> Um, and then we started writing, and we're like, oh, let's form a group because we're crazy, you know? And we need it. Because we always say, like, I love lesbianas, they're always writing and shit. We gotta catch up. <laughs> you know, we're trying, we're trying. <laughs> um, so I wanted to, my story, what I'm gonna tell you, my narrative is that, you know, I'm fairly, I'm fairly young, I'm 22, you know? I've been clubbing for a year now. Uh, allegedly, because I was clubbing when I was 17. Um, with my brother's ID, but um, so what I, I for me from an academic perspective, um, I view the club as a place of research. Um, <laughs> it was a place of research and community action. Um, you do a lot of community service at the club. You support a lot of local community members. Um, you provide a lot of resources our community don't have access to. You know, we have access to the club, but we don't necessarily have access to the library. So when you're quoting people at a club, it's real hot because they'll be like, what the fuck you say, that's deep. <laughs> so I've been clubbing a lot, right? You can catch me at Club Papi. You can catch me at Breaks in San Jose. I have a uh, arena tomorrow. I'm um, just kidding. Um, and so one of my encounters that I've learned because I've been clubbing is that, you know, todas las jotas vamos al club, you know, because we want to fuck it up, right? A putear, you know? Um, and I've noticed that I meet brothers at the club, and I already know, I already know, it's written already, you're not gonna meet someone at the club. Like, obviously, everybody's drunk, there's all this music that's all like, horny music, and <laughs> fucking cranberry vodka everywhere. <laughs> you're not gonna find anybody with substance, right? Um, and then, you know, I don't know why brothers think it's really hot, they can just like, grab your ass and shit, and you think, damn, that's sexy, you know? It's not cute. Um, <laughs> Sometimes it is if you're really drunk, but it's not cute. So I've been meeting all these kinds of people, right? And they always add me on Facebook, like, oh, you'll see whatever, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I'm a poet, you know, I do, I'm a poet. And they're like, what the fuck is that, you know? <laughs> I write poems. It's like, oh, but not, at the, not necessarily, I don't write poems at the club, you know, the club, I'm a different person, I'm a go-go dancer. Um, and so I'm, I was at the club this one time, I was with like these other Jotas, you know, they're professors, you know, I think about professors that did you see them, you know, they're giving all these deep lectures and then you see them at the club and you're like, damn, that's some shit, bitches, putas. They'd be like deconstructing some like, oh, gender equality, level, and you just put like a fucking slow jam and shit, they'd be like, bam, bam, muy fuerte las professors. So I was with these two professors um, clubbing, I'm not going to say what school because, you know, I'm going to get all but I was clubbing um, with two professors, and then this guy, you know, I was like dancing, you know. When I dance, I dance, I throw it down. I'll be on some shit, I'll get the guy down. So I was dancing, I was doing me, you know, because, you know, I don't go to the club to meet people. I'm just like, mm, you know, vibing with me. And, and you know, when you look good, the, the light just shines, like when you like down. And so people are just attracted to you. And so I'm dancing, right? And you know the basic bump, you know, they go like that and then try to like up booty you and shit, but ain't nobody gonna up booty me. Um, so I'm doing it. And I meet this brother, he's like my height, real Mexican, indigenous looking brother. Um, and I'm like, oh shit, he's my height, that's cute. You know, he's brown, he has like this fade, really, you know, really gangster looking brother. Like, damn, that's my type, I'm all about that shit. Um, <laughs> So I get to meet him, you know, we start dancing. Arrincona me la para arriba, arrincona me la para abajo, you know? Um, and so we started dancing, and he starts, you know, I'm, I talk, I'm sorry, I can't just, if I'm dancing with you, at least I want to know your name, you know? I'm like, hola, como te llama? I, you know, it's really different when you go to clubs, because you don't know if you speak Spanish or English, because you don't know. So I'm like, hola, como te llama? So he speaks Spanish, like, oh, me llamo Carlos. I'm like, oh, that's hot, that's a cute name. Um, like my uncle's name, Carlos. And so we're dancing and whatever, 
And I think he's really drunk because he thinks it's really sexy for him to whisper his hot saliva breath in my ear. Like, oh, I'm not that drunk. Um, and he's all like, what's your name? I'm like, oh, my name is Yossi. <laughs> <laughs> and he's all like, oh, how old are you? I'm like, oh, I'm 22. He's all like, you look 16. And I'm like, oh, is that why you're dancing with me? <laughs> but it was so funny because I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, where are you from? Like, you can tell him, like, if you're from Oakland, let's go. Um, I'm like, where are you from? He's all like, I'm from Watsonville. I'm real immigrant. <laughs> And I'm all like, oh, that's so cute. I think I've been there, you know, Watsonville, what, what? Um, and so he tells me all this story. I'm from Watsonville. He's 30 years old. So I'm like, oh, shit. Mm. <laughs> I don't want to be ages. I want to be equal opportunities, you know, but um, 25 is my max. Um, <laughs> because 30 ya está bien correteado. If I, if I 18, they already meet, no. If I 18 ya está bien correteado, imagine 30, oh, hell no. <laughs> That's some shit. So I'm like, oh, that's nice to meet you, so whatever. And then he has, and then he, because I speak English, you know, I have access to the language. Um, I'm really privileged. Um, I'm aware that the fact that I'm very privileged. So I speak English. I'm like, oh yeah, that's really cute. You know, Boston though, it's cute. Um, you know, and he's, then he starts to speak to me in English, and I'm like, oh, what does that mean? I be fed. Well, I'm drunk. I can't hear. Um, you know, and I say, oh, I think you're really sexy. And I'm like, oh. Thank you. Um, and then he saw, and the, the, the line that did it for me, because he thought it was really hot, he's all like, um, can I tell you something? I'm like, oh, yeah. see, see, man. You can tell me whatever you want, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he goes with this heavy ass accent. I'm just hating, you know, but I'm an immigrant, so I can't do it. <laughs> she goes, I wanna fuck you. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's so romantic. <laughs> That is hella sweet. Nobody has ever said that. That's like, like when I see that shit, I always call them actos de nobleza, you know, when somebody really means it. And it's a really noble gesture, you know? It's really noble. You're like, oh, Papa, you are so cute. Pero no. 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 And if they're elitist bitch, because there's some elitist motherfuckers at the club, they think that because they wear a hat, they think they're top. <laughs> <laughs> Just let them know. Just because you're off, wear a hat, you're not a top. Just because you look good in underwear and dry your pelvis, and that means you're a dancer. So with that being said, um, I dated, I had, I have had this history of dating this bunch of tragic brown men. Um, who has it, right? Um, and so I started writing these poems, right, about these brothers and these certain circumstances that I found myself in. And then I started realizing these poems are not really about them, you know, these poems are about myself and the growth and the stage that I was in, right? Y pues, um, then I realized, damn, why do I write sad shit? I shouldn't write sad shit. So then I'm like, I'm gonna write some empowering shit for brothers because we need it, right? Because we need to heal and shit, allegedly. And so I wrote this poem titled, If I Could Write You Into a Man, because my friends were teaching me that words have, you know, power. And so if you put out prayers, they come to you. So it goes like this. If I could write you into a man, I would give you a noble heart, make you soft with open palms, soft lips, and heartbeat. Give you heaven as eyes, mountains as arms, language that is wind music when you speak. If I could write you into a man, I would make you less harsh, more honest and intimate, unafraid of the hugs I give you, of the words that give. Lessen your burden, make your chest tender, write you noble and whole, give you dimples, write your skin as sun-kissed, give you powers unimaginable, not write you as king, but as sacred, write you as reflection. If I could write you into a man, I would write endless poems, verses and metaphors in which there are no empty promises, just accountability. No chasing clouds, but firm grounds for us to build on. Give you substance. I will write you as a healer. Make you understand that this battle is spiritual. That when I, that the reason I write is because I love you. Because I am loyal. Because I don't want to let go of you. I want you here next to me, even if you are not all the things I want you to be. If I could write you into a man, I would make you free. Like butterflies in my stomach, let you dance inside of my, of the walls of my heart. If I could write you into a man, I would write you beautifully in language that is universal. Write you emotionally available, write you tangible, write my name on your brain so all you have are thoughts of me in the million words in which I love you. What's it gonna say?